voting in favor of Rosa, please raise your hands. Yeah. Any against? Yeah. Abstentions? Rosa is the VP candidate. Country and have had my back 
Her husband, Hector, and her sons, Camilo and Gabriel, who recently took us in when we had no home. Joshua Braybart and Kat Aaron, Deepa Fernandez, Elizabeth Mendez Berry, Hector Rivera, Jabril Ture, Dahu Allah, Ray Ramirez of the most important group of my time after Dead Prez, the Welfare Poets. Of course, M1 and Stick, Umi, Didan, Divino, my RBG family, Immortal Technique, and again, Davey D. If it wasn't for Davey D, who in 2001 ran my infamous article on Russell Simmons is not hip hop, I would not be a hip hop activist. Mm. Jeff Chang, Malkia Sorrell, my heroine in the media justice movement, Khalil Al Mustafa, DJ Cutting Candy, April Silver, Tony Blackman, Kevin Powell, Suhair Hama, who's watching right now. Yes, Suhair, Palestine will be free and you will be free. To my family and the founders of the National Hip Hop Political Convention. In March 2003, me and TJ and 11 other people sat in the offices of Third World Press on the south side of Chicago and we said we will not be taken for granted. We will form our own political agenda. In particular, Angela Woodson, Bakari Kitawana, Jeff Johnson, Dawn Alyssa Fisher, Orlando Green, and all the new leadership. We'll see you in Vegas in three weeks. Troy Nkrumah and Heather Ch Sanchez. The Hip Hop Congress in Chicago Noble and the Hip Hop Caucus, Reverend Lennox Yearwood, who married me in justice on June 14th. He's a reverend and a hip hop artist. And all my beautiful women artists in hip hop, Invincible, Jean Grey, again Tony Blackman, Maria Issa, Locke, all the beautiful women who have upheld the culture. And to the pioneers, particularly Africa Bambada, Chuck D, Ernie Panicoli, and DJ Charlie Chase, who never once did not support me because I was a woman. In fact, encouraged my leadership and helped me to grow. They taught me invaluable lessons on how you can be great and humble at the same time. To Sally O'Brien, Bashir Chawe, and Alambe Brath, Elders who took me under their wings and let me become a journalist on the best station out there, WBAI 99.5, New York City, of the best network in the world. My mentors, who I feel like second mothers and fathers, and this is such a full circle moment. I went to the University of Albany, September 1990. My first professor was Professor Colia Clark, right here. <laughs> Who showed me a movie called The Battle of Algiers. <laughs> As a freshman. Dr. Vivian Verdell Gordon, the greatest teacher I ever had, who I lost too soon to Dr. James Turner, who has built the most unbelievable forward-thinking Africana Studies Department in the country, the Africana Studies and Research Center at Cornell University. And again, Haki Madabudi, founder and owner of Third World Press, right here on the south side of Chicago, who without, no one in the hip-hop generation would have a historical archive of the greatest scholar activists in the world, including Dr. John Henry Clark. And last but certainly not least, Richie Perez, one of the greatest revolutionaries of our time. Because of his love for humanity, young people, and commitment to social justice, I am better because of him. At this moment, I speak to his spirit and say, Palante, siempre palante. And yes, Richie, we have up the ante today. <laughs> this list is not even complete. And in the hip hop community, we call that shout outs. Yes. And that's important because every one of these people does work in their own right. I stand here today not on my own two feet, but on the marching and the footprints of all those I mentioned. Just like one of my favorite poems, Footprints in the Sand, 
Every one of these people at one time or another has lifted me and carried me with their words, support, lyrics, guidance, and love. People often say words can't express how joyful they are, how joyful we are. Well, I am from the hip hop generation, and we remix anything and everything. <laughs> express my honor, my humbleness, but also my intellect and readiness to take on this task. And Dick Cheney, bring it on. I'm ready to do it. The only way I can even begin to accept this nomination is know that I've got my people who have my back. But I'm a vessel, a representative of the work of an entire 30-year movement, a hip-hop movement that is radical. Not a hip-hop Republican movement, not a hip-hop Democratic movement, but a hip-hop progressive radical activist movement that uses the vote to bring what we need in public policy. That those are rappers, those are recorded artists who get paid to perform. Hip hop is so much more than videos and bling and commercials and women being used as objects. The hip hop movement was created with the first beatbox, first B girl, B boy, MC battle, and graffiti tag. A movement created by black and brown youth that now speaks to youth all over the world. New Zealand, Australia, France, everywhere hip hop speaks. Hip hop was created in what continues to be the poorest congressional district in this country, the South Bronx, where I grew up on East Tremont and Harrison, 1972, where my father still has his business on Elder Avenue. I stand on the shoulders of a generation of young people of color and white youth that are united and that clearly understand that we are suffering from structural racism, institutional racism, capitalism, and militarism. We are fighting for survival. We fight for the faceless, the micless, the speechless, the black and brown, indigenous, Asian, and white faces. We are not fighting for the right to just vote. We are fighting for the right to adjust life and the right to live humanely. The government of America has perpetrated wars not only abroad, but here at home. The war on drugs, the war on immigrants, the war on working class people, a war on youth. This is the wars that we must fight for freedom. We are faced with issues that are getting progressively worse. No livable wage, no affordable housing, and not just subprime mortgage, but the complete destabilization of rent control in every, con in every city gentrification, the prison industrial complex, the AIDS pandemic in the African American and Latino community is killing particularly heterosexual African American women and Latinas more than anyone else. Lack of a free healthcare system. Ending the stranglehold of media conglomerates that do irreparable damage in marginalized communities with stereotypical racist, misogynistic, and sexist propaganda. But, as the Flowbots, my new favorite group, says, we can lead a nation with a microphone. Hip-hop has been that mic, but now the Green Party needs to be the power that can turn up the volume and blow the speakers out. Yes, everybody will tell you. I say yes. You're arrested. I got bail for you. I got a lawyer. I got a press conference. <laughs> Sometimes at the hazard of my personal self. That's who I am. To always say yes because I understand what we need. Of course, I got scared. What does this mean for me and my entire generation? I'm honored to be part of this because it means that we have now been asked not only to step up, the torch has been given to us. So now, it's up to us, this generation. They gave it up to us, what do we do with it? My friend Mawali emailed me from the Grassroots Artist Movement, a hip hop organization dedicated to unionizing rappers so that they would have health care. 
Housing of black Puerto Rican from East Chamon and Harrison Avenue, born in 72, get on a stage to accept the nomination of the most progressive, innovative political party in the country. In order for me to answer that question, I would have to start at the beginning, which I'm not going to do because I don't know. But I've been asked by so many people lately, is the Green Party just trying to gather votes from young people? Why are they putting you on the ticket? Well, I won't go over my bio. It speaks for itself. But I have to tell them, I'm running a BBP because I stand on the T10 key values and principles. intersect with the values we hold dear in hip-hop. We amplify our politics, our pain, our love, our need for social justice through the mic, the music, the art, the culture. Thirty years later, when they decried that hip-hop would die in 78, as my friend Jeff Chan tells us in his seminal book, Can't Stop, Won't Stop, we are a generation that the United States has decided to marginalize, imprison, and send to war to fight people who look like us. We are a generation that is clear that many of our free freedom fighters who go by the names of Fred Hampton, Mumia Abu-Jamal, Sojourner Truth, Ida B. Well Barnett, John Brown, Matt Turner, Harriet Tubman, Fannie Lou Hamer, Dilsia Pagan, Luis Rosa, Lena Peltier, Matula Shakur, Oscar Lopez, and the other David Gilbert, and the many United States political prisoners. The Green Party would not exist without what they put down. This was an extensive yet incomplete list. However, we must remember the breadth, intellect, innovation, and vision from our people that we have been privileged to learn from. When Kanye West said George Bush does not like black people, I would extend to say he don't like anybody who ain't got money. <laughs> he doesn't like women that stand for their right to choose. And I would extend that now to say neither does the establishment of the Republican or Democratic Party. We will not be fooled again like we were in New Orleans. We also fight against any type of ideology that continues to divide us. When New Orleans flooded, Puerto Rico cried, Brazil cried, New Zealand cried, Australia cried, Cuba cried, Panama, Mexico, Chile, Nicaragua, and the Dominican Republic. The hip hop duo Dead Prez in their album Let's Get Free says, Telling lies to our vision, telling lies to our children, telling lies to our babies. Only truth can save us. You can't fool all of the people all of the time, but if you fool the right ones, then the rest will fall behind. Tell me who's got control of your mind and your worldview. Is it the news or the movie you're taking yourself to? Those prophetic words uttered over eight years ago still ring true today. Post 911, the majority of the American people have been living under a blanket of lies and fears. We must be the ones that are no longer fooled. We must remember that youth have always taken risks. From the Soweto uprisings in South Africa to African American and Mexicano children in the 50s and 60s walking out of schools to the 16, 17, 18, and 19 year old men and women who joined the ranks of SDS, the Weather Underground, the Black Panther Party, the American Indian Movement, the Black Liberation Movement, the Young Lords Party. Young people have always been the catalyst of change. I bring those organizations up because when the media tells us who they are, they tell us they're crazy radicals. And you know what? They're radicals. And they're not crazy. We must Make a call for media justice, not only as something we talk about, but something that is now inherent to our humanity. 
I often find it hard to be optimistic and hopeful, to envision true freedom and justice. In a time when this government is elected by elitist people or selected by Supreme Court judges, in a time when black and brown and white folks never really count, in a time when dogs that get abused get more press than a black man being shot at 50 times. We must remember we know the world we, in which we live and we always know another world is possible. We must remember our ancestors who broke those chains everywhere around the world. They, know, they knew for the future another world had to be made. This answer is not always yes we can, but we will do. Not always yes you can, but you will do. We must remember the words of the greatest abolitionist, Frederick Douglass. I prefer to be true to myself, even at the hazard of incurring the ridicule of others, rather than to be false. So for the first time in my life, I have a choice. We have a choice. Everyone watching around the world on C-SPAN, you have a choice. Drop the Democrats. Go on Monday. Enjoy the second-class citizenship no longer. This shows us that we can no longer waste our time and energy on those who are already moderating themselves to the right. So the question is not whether you have a choice, but you are ready to take that risk and do the work necessary. I leave you with this. The campaign against Vieques, getting the U.S. Navy out of Vieques, Puerto Rico, started 66 years before. May 2005. The Puerto Rican people came together and said, I don't care if you believe in independence or statehood, but at the end of the day, the Navy needs to get out of Vieques. Because we understand that Puerto Rico is the southern command for every war, every war that this country puts forward. After years of the united struggle, including Brazilians, African, Puerto Ricans, European, even Al Sharpton took an arrest for us. <laughs> Progressive whites, political prisoners, and many others. It happened. On May 3rd, 2005, 
2005, I was on the island reporting for BAI when Midnight Struck and Lolita Lebron and Rafael Gonzalez Miranda, former political prisoners, were there to knock down that gate and 50,000 people marched forward in victory. That is resistance and we can make it happen in every corner of the world. As I stand here today, I know I'm in the midst of the work of El Maestro Don Pedro Aviso Campos, the leader of the Puerto Rican Nationalist Party, who was tortured by this government that the government admitted in early 2000 that they put a radiation light in his jail to kill him from cancer, who served time in Atlanta, Georgia, the prison where Matulu Shakur sits. He said, when tyranny is law, revolution is order. I say now, the Green Party is that revolution. Yo soy boricua, pa que, pa que tú lo sepas, pero ahora yo soy 20. I'm 20.